Hey guys, what's up? Sandu here. So today I'll be discussing about something really special for the headphone enthusiast. If you are one of them, please stay a while and listen. It will be worth your while, I promise. So it all started about uh, half a year ago when I had a longer conversation with uh, Flux Lab Acoustics from Ukraine. They asked me what was the most powerful headphone amplifier at that time. And I, I replied back that it was the Barsan Conductor 3 reference and the Audio GD Master 9. Uh, at about 8 to 9 watts of power, those two could literally drive some passive speakers with a special adapter. They came back much later on and informed me that they will be releasing very soon a very advanced, a very special DAC with streaming capabilities via Ethernet, via Wi-Fi. Uh, that could even use some external flash drives or even HDD drives filled with music. So it could easily be controlled by a web interface that can be accessed via your PC, your laptop, your smartphone, your tablet. The cherry on top, 16 watts of power into 32 ohms. Yep, you heard that right. So 16 juicy watts on both the quarter inch and on the four pin XLR headphone jack. So with numbers like this, uh, this mysterious device that uh, at that point didn't have a name, would instantly become most powerful headphone amplifier ever built and the most interesting all-in-one device for new generation of audiophiles. I was quoted a less than 1500 US dollars and that was the moment when my enthusiasm level just breached the top floor of this building. So they were teasing me for months that would in the end be called FCN10 that you see right here, a very powerful streaming duck and a very powerful headphone amplifier. So when you have numbers like this and promises like that, you just uh, start wondering, so what's the drawback? Where are the minuses, where are the cons? And uh, I'm being bombarded back with specs like uh, Toshiba bipolar transistors, an all discrete design, 64-step relay controlled volume attenuator, premium components from the likes of Nikikon, Nippon, Takman, Fujitsu, and a custom Toroidal transformer that I'm normally spotting in a multi-thousand audio gear. So could it be true, a truly high-end piece of kit with a mid-fi price attached to it? Let's find out. In terms of design, it might look small in photos, but in reality, FCN10 is a beast of a unit. It's not your typical DAC and headphone amp combo, and arranging it on your desktop uh, might pose a small issue. On the right side of the case, exactly behind the 4-pin XLR output, sits a huge heatsink that uh, cools down the final output transistors, you can see it through the holes in the case. That is one of the reasons FCN10 shouldn't stay on any other audio component that dissipates heat and nothing should stay on top of it for the same reason. As for controls, on the front you will find an on-off switch and input selectors, so AUX input will make it work as a headphone amplifier only, USB will engage that USB DAC and headphone amp section, and LAN will engage Ethernet and later on the Wi-Fi input. It will also engage the USB ports on the back, making it work as a simple digital music player. Next switch will change the gain position from low, mid and high. In the middle you can spot the volume wheel that offers uh, 64 steps of precision volume adjustment by using mechanical relays and since it's an analog volume control, not a single bit of information will be lost in the process. They didn't want to force you on using the 4-pin XLR jack, so they decided that both headphone jacks will output the same power. On the back it has a simple DAC output via RCA, meaning that you can use it as a pure DAC with a fixed volume position, or you can use it as a pure headphone amp by using the RCA input. Then you have two USB Type-A inputs, where you can connect two flash drives or uh, external hard drives if you want. And below them you have the Ethernet input followed by the Wi-Fi antenna socket and by the AC inlet. As for the tech inside, Flag's lab team didn't spare a dime when it comes to internal components, so it uses two AK4493 DAC chips working in mono mode, squeezing the best those can offer. An Amanero Technologies USB board, three high-precision crystal clocks, as for the amp stage, which covers the biggest surface area of the unit, I spotted 12 output transistors. Yep, that's right, 12 of them. From which two are located on the main board, probably preamplifying the signal for the next 10 output transistors that are bolted to the heatsink. FCN10 will output some 60 watts of mind-blowing power, 
backed up by a huge power bank to deliver all that power in an instant to your precious headphone drivers. So in the end, as you can see, both the digital and the analog section are done at high standards and there is little to complain about in a unit like this one. Okay everybody, it's time to hit some eardrums. In terms of overall sound quality, I can summarize everything with just uh, three words. So, holy shit. So, I always believe that there is a very strong correlation between output power of a headphone amplifier with the actual slam that it could produce, especially when it comes to low-end rumble and impact. So, in a real-world situation, I could never test my claims, just because all the best headphone amplifiers I know are offering somewhere between uh, 6 and 9 watts of power. So um, not much of a difference uh, in terms of power. So the difference in terms of slam uh, was there, but only in very small doses. So remember when I posted my benchmark HP4 uh, review, I was uh, rising it high sky as being the best headphone amplifier when it comes to slam. So the actual punch that it could produce um, uh, with engaging music. So uh, all my words are still standing in that review, but I think I will uh, redraw my words of it being the hardest slamming amplifier. So ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we have a new winner on our hands. So from the first seconds of pressing play, FCN 10 felt like the ballsiest and the hardest slamming amplifier I put my hands on. So just forget everything you know about headphone amplifiers, FCN 10 is still a very different beast. So this is not really a joke uh, if you are into fast and engaging music, uh, maybe aggressive type of music, uh, think electronica, rock or maybe metal then this is probably the one to win you over with its uh, pugilist um, approach of rendering all that music. So uh, think about receiving just a serious hit in the eardrums every single time a drum note hits. Think about getting those bass notes uh, deep in your thoughts. Think about having the energy of a rock concert uh, in the comfort of your home. Think about toy tapping like a madman and smiling like Joker that type of performance. So as of right now, I can clearly see a very strong correlation between output power and the actual slam and punch a headphone amplifier or any amplifier could produce. And FCN10 is uh, basically the best example for that. So in terms of background noise, this is still the most powerful headphone amplifier out there. So as it was the case of a Barson Conductor Free reference, I expected a dirtier background with sensitive IEMs at my normal listening level and some are uh, just some gremlins in my tunes harassing my uh, listening pleasure. So I engaged a low gain and I connected the most sensitive IEMs at my disposal, the FIO FH7, um, and I pressed play. And from all those uh, 16,000 milliwatts of power, only a single one is needed to reach the ear bleeding level of 111 uh, decibels. So it's the easiest load you could possibly have. They can even be driven by your smartphone by or just by anything that has a headphone jack, including your grandma's radio. So armed with a mini DSP ear system that you see right here, I could actually measure the volume level at which I'm listening. So the absolute highest volume that I could listen to with my IEMs uh, is 100 dB, but just for very few seconds and that equals to 12 volume position on the low gain position, on the low gain. So up to that point, uh, up to 100 dB, the background noise is absolutely noiseless, free of any gremlins, just a pitch black background filled with nothingness. So past that point, uh, there is a faint, barely audible hiss that would be heard, uh, but only if the music is uh, paused. So obviously nobody can listen to music at that volume, so I'm very glad to report that FCN10 works absolutely great with IEMs. Another great thing is that uh, there is plenty of volume up to the 12 uh, o'clock position, so more exactly 32 clicks. Uh, if you like to listen to music at low volume at night, or maybe this is the only way you listen to music, um, the volume rises just gradually and very slowly with FCN10, making it just perfect for uh, low volume listeners. In terms of resolution and transparency, when I was talking with the Flux Lab team, uh, I casually asked why going with the AK4493 and not with something uh, higher performance. That question quickly escalated into a very long conversation and they made me remember that I've listened to terrible DACs that um, are using top of the line chips 
And I also listened to top of the line DACs that are using entry level DAC chips. So that is a very good lesson as everything um, uh, is in details and I still don't judge a book by its cover. When I listened to my IEMs with this monstrous amplifier, uh, it already showed me signs of great potential having such a clean background, free of any grain or imperfections. So that will directly impact the performance of the DAC. So since those AK4493 are working in dual mono mode, uh, Flux guys are basically squeezing the best it can offer and it's making it uh, behave above a single AK4495 and about on the same level with the AK4497 put on a reference board. So this is a very clever design if you ask me and FCNTN is just uh, great at showing all the micro details you could possibly want. So exactly how a top performing DAC should sound. As for transit response, I jumped directly listening to Rodrigo y Gabriela Hanuman and I don't know exactly who from these uh, beautiful souls is slamming that guitar so hard. So I'm feeling that slam almost with my whole body, which obviously is not happening since I'm listening with headphones. So this track is incredibly engaging and really hard slamming with um, every single second. Mind you, this is all happening with just two acoustic guitars and yet so much joy and so much power and so much high pressure level and dynamics can be obtained with just two simple guitars. When I moved to Mombasa by Tucelos, I felt the same jumping notes that were hitting me just much harder than I remembered with other amplifiers. So this song is sounding just super wide, big, airy, but also incredibly powerful. So some simple cellos shouldn't sound as engaging, as powerful and as fast, or maybe they should. I want to point out that with a powerful amplifier, with a very potent amplifier like this one, you don't really need some uh, boomy song, some punching song, some uh, bass filled uh, electronic music to feel all that speed, all that punch it can provide. So FCN 10 is just a true testament and my future benchmark when it comes to pace, rhythm, timing and slam. So yes, my friends, it was able to outperform my uh, personal favorite benchmark HPA4 when it comes to speed, decay and then most importantly in the slam department. So it changes some of my headphones so much that I wanted to listen to all my headphones and test their limits uh, all over again that I just uh, rediscovered. There is indeed a very strong correlation between output power, transit response and control of the driver. As for soundstage and depth, listening to the beautiful music of uh, Eluvete called Brigtom and Omnos, performed in the long forgotten Gaulish, um, those tracks are rendered just a little bit bigger, airier and much uh, wider spread compared to the best out there, I mean the Sparkos Labs Aries or Benchmark HPA4. So uh, using traditional instruments uh, you normally associate with folk music, plus some unusual ones like uh, bagpipes or even better hurdy-gurdy. With a capable audio chain, I'm literally uh, transported back in time. So uh, FCN 10 was able to widen the stage, uh, add just a little bit of air between all those crowded notes and just make everything more manageable uh, and easier to follow and focus on something particular. So FCN 10 is just sounding bigger, more imposing and deeper than the most solid state headphone amplifiers that I had the pleasure of testing. I can definitely say that uh, it belongs to the same category and to the same group as uh, Barson Conductor Free Reference and uh, Audio GD D38, which to this day sounded as the deepest um, and the airiest solid state uh, amplifiers I had the pleasure of testing. And finally, moving on to the frequency response, I want to point out that I'm experiencing a deep, controlled, and a really sustained sub bass performance that is always clean, layered, and very present if the track is asking for it. So uh, sub bass and mid bass uh, information is the big part of the slam and the punch that I experienced before. So it is just natural having um, an impressive uh, bass performance, mid bass and sub bass. So the most difficult frequency to move air around is basically the low end. Uh, and yet FCN 10 is doing that so easily and so bravely. So listening just to all kinds of electronic music feels just very natural on this unit. 
since it really excels uh, and playing it so vividly clear, so detailed and so controlled. An AKM bass DAC and also an all discrete amplifier will always um, impress a mid-range addict like myself. So uh, this one is on the fuller and meter side of things compared to others. So be sure to expect just a really nice mid-range presence, deep and textured voices, uh, amazing guitar plugs and a lot of naturalness. So uh, having such a huge power reserve and also a really nice power filtering, uh, the purity of female voices wasn't touched and also the heavy tonality of male voices was preserved to the smallest details. Even listening to some older tunes where a dry mid-range would appear, FCN10 would somehow uh, counterbalance that issue, will infuse a little bit of its medicine, improve the mid-range presence and just make it believable and real. So from dry to wet and from thin to full bodied, uh, basically all discrete bipolar transistors amps always had a natural way of uh, playing all my tunes. It has an extended treble region, but uh, in the same time it's not an aggressive type of treble, more like a calm type of treble. And by calm I don't mean that it has a lesser engagement factor or maybe lesser dynamics, I just mean uh, less bright and less harsh compared to a drier sounding amplifier. So I stressed this unit uh, for about two weeks now, uh, with all kinds of music, including aggressive music, where treble was recorded in a very raw manner, without too much mastering behind it. So uh, treble intensive music will be played back much easier for the human ear, but in the same time um, uh, all the obvious flaws as heavy distortions or clipping will not be cured with this one. So I consider that FCN10 has a perfect balance of uh, treble extension, naturalness and crispness. As for the power output, this is a very interesting topic and there is no other way of saying it. So FCN10 is just without a doubt the most powerful headphone amplifier that I have ever tried at my place. So in terms of raw power uh, and ultimate control, it outperformed all the best ones I listened to. So uh, if you need a single amplifier to drive uh, everything from uh, small IAMs, uh, super sensitive IAMs to big cans, then this is it. So from my stable, only the hi fi Man area and uh, Odyssey LCD4 uh, needed the mid gain position, yeah, so not the high gain position, which actually I never went past the one o'clock position on the volume wheel, which is kind of impressive. So uh, let's say that with all my cans, uh, I don't think I ever passed uh, 40 to maximum 45 of its power output. So it's mighty powerful and it's controlling extremely well all that power. I suspected that there will be some drawbacks of having so much power under its hood, but in reality there isn't any drawback and if you crave for power, for absolute control, for the punchiest slam that I countered with my headphones, then FCN10 is just uh, the one that deserves your attention and your hard-earned money. I also compared this one with the Barson Conductor Free Reference, but since I'm not fond into long and boring reviews, I seriously recommend you checking out that comparison in the written review that I left in the description below. As for the conclusion, here is the thing. So Flux Lab Acoustics is a fairly new company and if it wants to capture your attention, it needs to do it in style with some interesting products at affordable prices. So if you can point me out to a unit that works in dual DAC mode, uh, that has a powerful Wi-Fi and uh, Ethernet streamer, uh, that is AirPlay compatible, that offer gobs of power, that could literally drive any headphone you want, uh, that is super quiet and clean sounding at less than 1500 bucks. I don't know any, and considering everything uh, it does in a, such an easy manner, I consider it dirt cheap and it's probably the best kept secret of the headphone uh, world at just 1350 bucks. So one more thing that I want to add, if you don't really need that uh, dark section, if you don't need that streamer, uh, you can go only with the amp only version that is called FA10 at only 750 bucks. It is exactly the same unit, just without the digital boards and without any digital input. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. My uh, full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and thank you for doing that. As usual, listen to more music, be positive and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.